Hi, I'm Tim. Please join me in this video as we talk once more about the critical importance of achieving the proper center of gravity for any airplane that flies from RC-10 to full scale. And we got a very vivid reminder of this the other day from a JetBlue accident at JFK Airport. Let's get to it. On October 22, 2023, JetBlue Flight 662 uh, coming into JFK Airport, New York City, had an accident where the jet was at the gate. It was about half full of passengers getting off the airplane at JFK. There was a problem with the center of the gravity, and the plane with the passengers on board actually tipped back on its tail, and it hit pretty hard on the tail. There was some damage where the um, door was near the uh, jetway as passengers were, were exiting. Luckily, nobody got hurt. Nobody got hurt on the airplane or on the ground because there are people around the airplane all the time servicing it as it pulls in, and it was nighttime. So the plane hit the ground. The flight attendants calmly took um, charge of the situation, started slowly moving passengers to the front of the airplane. It uh, tipped back on its nose in the proper direction and they carefully deplaned two rows at a time until everybody was safely off the airplane. But this happened, okay? This happened and it's a very good time just to think about, discuss the absolute critical importance of center of gravity for all airplane operations from full scale to R the RC models that we fly. Every airplane has a center of gravity that must be met. It could be a light model like this uh, Guilo's Aranca. It could be a full-scale 747 flying. Typically, for a straight wing, the CG is 20 to 25% back from the leading edge. That's a good um, starting point for your center of gravity. When we used to build all of our models from kits or plans, the center of gravity was marked in the plans. It was a critical part of our thinking. Uh, luckily, even for the ARFs that many of us fly, the CG is discussed a, uh, in detail because you've got to have the correct center of gravity for that model to fly properly. Even with all the pre-building and preparation of almost ready to fly airplanes, you've got to look at the CG because our batteries, LiPo batteries with electric motors are quite heavy. Depending where those are fit in the aircraft, it could affect whether or not the plane is in the proper center of gravity. If you don't have the proper center of gravity, the plane will either be very difficult to fly, or if the CG is too far aft, it could well be uncontrollable once you take off. It's something we always have to keep in mind as we fly. The center of gravity is important enough that on my RFs, I literally mark it with a pen or a little indentation on the wing so I can see where it is. I, I check it along with making sure the controls are moving in the proper direction before each flight. On my Futura um, RC jet aircraft, we can see where the center of gravity is marked, where I marked it on the wing. Also, as we take a quick look inside the battery compartment, it's a very generous battery compartment to handle a wide range of batteries. But with these heavy batteries, be very sure that that battery is located fore and aft to put the center of gravity at the proper location for your flight. For full-scale aircraft, to include airliners, center of gravity has to be computed before every flight. There are usually done by a computer. There are paper backups. It's a combination of the passenger load, how many passengers, where they are, the fuel, and the cargo in the aircraft. That has got to be done and is filed away at headquarters. So if there is any incident on that airliner flight, the first thing they'll do is to check the center of gravity to make sure that everything is in order. The center of gravity is also not exactly a precise point. Again, this is what the symbols look like on plans and arse. But rather, the CJ, the center of gravity is a range. You can have a nose heavy and a little bit tail heavy. If it's within the proper center of gravity range, the model's still good to fly. The range will vary greatly on the type of model. Clearly, for airliners, you want a fairly large range for different passenger loads. For smaller aircraft, it's going to be almost a point where it will fly best. I just put my fingers under the wing to get a rough idea of the center of gravity. And if there's any doubt about where the CG should be, start off with the uh, CG a little bit in the nose heavy direction of forward CG. Uh, the plane will be a little bit sluggish on controls, but it will fly and aft CG can cause a great deal of problem on um, during flight if you're not prepared for it. It's unfortunate what happened to the JetBlue aircraft, but that has happened um, more times than you might realize to aircraft 
Oftentimes cargo aircraft, where they're loading cargo too far aft, there might be a fuel uh, balance situation that's not accounted for, and the plane will just fall on its tail. Uh, this is not supposed to happen. Uh, the airlines and aircraft have to develop procedures not to do it, but it does happen from time to time. So the JetBlue um, accident that happened on October 22nd, we don't have any details yet. We know that it happened. They'll have to be researched to figure out why that occurred, what unique conditions were going on with fuel, cargo, passengers that allowed that to happen, and that just can't happen. They'll have to figure that out and come back with a response. But until then, it's a timely reminder of the importance of central gravity for anything that flies. That aircraft has a balance point. Make sure it's the right central gravity in the right range of location. And you'll just um, guard against any um, accidents when you're flying because a plane that's well out of the central gravity range cannot be flown. It's just you don't have enough control authority to control that aircraft. Thanks for watching and good luck with your flights.